Hi guys and welcome again to our Smart Photo Reviews channel. Today we have two interesting little accessories that we photographers don't like to carry around with us because they are bulky, they are a bit heavy, they give extra weight to our kit. They are sometimes tricky and fiddly to use, but sometimes we cannot do our task without them. So, what are we having here today? These two tripods. It's from the same series. It's B3 from Manfrotto. One is for photography. It's B3 Advanced Travel Tripod Kit. And the other one is for videography and it's B3 Live. So what do we expect from tripod? We expect it to be light. We expect it to be sturdy and stable, to be as compact as possible and to carry as much load as possible. These two tripods really succeed in almost all of these aspects. A few words about specifications of these two tripods. They are mostly similar in all specifications. The biggest difference among them is that this photo one carries a lot more weight. It's indicated to carry 8 kilograms or 17.64 pounds. On the other side, this other tripod for videography carries half of that load. Both of them are quite compact and when folded completely and packed, they are only 40 centimeters long or 15.748 inches. It's a great feature to have tripods compact as these two and you can carry them around very easily. Let's proceed now with unboxing of one of the tripods. It doesn't matter which one because they are quite similar. We will unbox this photo variant. Inside you have this little neat bag with Manfrotto logo. You can carry the tripod in this bag or you can just open it, take the tripod and carry it on your backpack or bag. Here's how the tripod looks like. It's available only in black color. You have this rubber on one of the legs for extreme weather conditions and cold. And you can see how compact this tripod is. You can put it almost anywhere. You can even put it inside your bag if you don't want to carry it on your bag. This compactness of the, this tripod is achieved by rotating its legs in different position, in upright position, when you pack it. But if you want to put it in working order, then you have to rotate the legs on the other side. You have three angles, adjustable three angles of the legs. And this is how it looks like when the legs are turned in the working order. We can extend this middle column here, the center column. Here is the twist the turn that we use to extend it. And this is when we extend it to the maximum. Let's start uh, from the upside down of this tripod. We have a ball head for photography here. We have a rotating screw that releases the head. And inside we have a little screw that adjusts the friction of the head. This screw here lets you rotate like this the ball head. So how do you attach the camera? You have a quick release plate with this butterfly screw here which you can turn around with your fingers instead of using 
some additional accessory like coin, coin or something to attach it. And when you attach the camera, you just click it in place. So it's very easy to mount the camera, as you will see a bit later on. With this center column down, now we can adjust the tripod to its minimum working position. First of all, we have to move the angle of the legs to the second middle position. By twisting this sliding buttons like this. And now we have to adjust a little bit the center column, not to touch the ground, like this, and then tighten this knob, and that's it. That is the lowest working position of the tripod in this kind of setup. Of course, you can release the center column, take out this thing off and then put it the other way around so you can achieve even lower positions if needed. Uh, now let's arrange this tripod to its maximum position. First we will arrange the angle of the legs now we have these lever locks here that we can release just in one move by one hand, all three of them, and extend the legs to the maximum. We will do that on all three sides. Here it is. And then we are at the maximum position of this tripod when we extend this central column like this. As you can see, I am around uh, 6.2 feet tall and this setup is almost perfectly fine for me. We have a camera here, Pro DSLR with grip attached, it's Canon 5DS with 70 to 20 200 millimeters f 2.8 lens on it. This is quite a usual setup for pro photographers and quite heavy also. So we will check the stability of this tripod with this setup. I should add that extended to the maximum, of course, the tripod is the least stable as possible. So we will check it under the extreme conditions. We do a click on the quick release plate here, tighten these knobs and screws, and here it is. We'll show you a little interesting test how to check uh, the stability of the tripod. You can attach a big lens like this 70 to 200, you can zoom it to maximum to 200 millimeters. Start live view on your camera, if it's available, of course. And then touch the lens a bit on the front and count the number of seconds it takes for the lens to stabilize. Of course, you should turn the stabilizer off, by all means. Now, let's see. One, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, almost ten seconds for this setup, which is the least stable, as I mentioned. Now we will check the next position, which should be much more stable than this one. We will put the central column down as much as possible. And again, repeat the same test. One, two, three, four, five. 
As you could see with the center column down, the tripod is far more stabilized than when fully extended and uh, it took uh, two times less time to stabilize the image than when fully extended. So this is the setup you should use if you are using long lens as we are now. Uh, now we will proceed with the unboxing of the video version. It's quite the same, so we do it a bit faster. We have the same little neat bag to carry the tripod around with one throttle log and everything. The tripod looks quite similar and have very similar specifications. The biggest difference is, of course, the head. This head is meant for videographers, as we said in the beginning. And this is how it looks like. You can turn these screws here and loosen the head. And it looks like this. This screw here is meant for friction of the head because the head is fluid for video recording. When you turn this screw, you can turn the head like this. And with this screw here, you can choose the angles of this handle, which is quite handy for some situations. It's also worth mentioning that because this head is meant for videographers, you cannot turn it into portrait orientation, just landscape orientations, which is quite expected. Furthermore, most of the features are similar or identical to this photo version. I will lower the central column down. Uh, the thing that is different is the way of releasing the legs on this tripod. It's twist and a lock and not lever locks like here. It's quite uh, similar, so either way can work for you. And it's very handy and fast to do it. You just take these three twist and turn locks and release them. Extend the legs, move them back, and then close. And we can conclude our video with pros and cons of these two tripods. There are a lot more pros than cons, <laughs> fortunately. For both of them, it's great thing that they are uh, compact, lightweight, they both can carry a lot of weight, but the difference is that this photo version can carry twice much as this one. But it's not that important because this one can carry also a lot of weight. Also, what is good is quick release system on both of them for the legs, lever locks or this twist and turn locks, it doesn't matter, both of them are very fast to operate. Then also high quality of materials is something uh, we don't want to forget. They are both very sturdy and uh, stable, as you could see in our stability tests. About cons, we had some hard time finding some stuff that aren't that good. For this photo version, the only stuff we could say not bad but not so good for this tripod is that it doesn't have spikes here to be more stable at some surfaces, but I think that with these rubbers here it's quite enough stable, so it's less con than it should be. Also, this uh, easy link connection 
we can't see much use for it on the photo tripod unless you are using it to snap some video or something. EasyLink attachment has much more sense on this video tripod because you can attach additional screen here or something else to monitor what you're shooting with this tripod. But something that bothered us the most on this video tripod is this, let's say, quick release plate because it has classical screw here that you can only tighten with a coin or with screwdriver or something else and you put it here like this you have a limiter here so it doesn't go off in front or in the back and then when we want to release it you push this button and release it it's not that bad but it's a bit trickier to use than this quick release on this photo version of the tripod So we came near the end of our latest video. What can we say about these two tripods? They are both quite good. They are both reasonably priced. And they are both something we can truly recommend to you. Because they are very compact, lightweight, they carry a lot of load, and you can easily pack them and carry them around wherever you go without almost feeling any trouble and any extra weight on your backpack. So that's it. If you liked our video, please hit the like button or consider subscribing if you don't want to miss our next videos. We hope you enjoyed this video and until the next time, bye bye.